Hello everyone and welcome to the RV Inspection and Care podcast and video. I'm Dwayne and I'm a certified RV inspector and today we're going to be talking about RV construction and specifically about conventional construction versus laminated construction in RVs or if you prefer the more popular terms stick and tin versus aluminum. There's a lot of misinformation out there about these two construction methods for RVs and which one is better and what you shouldn't get and what you should get and so on. For instance, there's some out there who think that any wood framing that's used in an RV equals an inferior RV product. There's also several who think that if you use wood for construction in an RV, well, that RV is just not going to last very long. Well, here's the truth. There are many great RVs out there that have been on the road for decades with wood frames and wood construction methods, and they're still going strong and doing very well. In fact, there are still RV manufacturers to this day who use wood framing and wood construction in their RVs. Now, we're going to focus on one manufacturer today, and that's because they use both methods. So it's great to be able to compare one to the other. The manufacturer we're going to use for our discussion is Grand Design. And Grand Design makes, for instance, the Transcend Explore, and it's made with a conventional construction method. And so here's their illustration of how that method works. And really this works for pretty much any wood framed or conventional method construction RV that you see out there. First of all, you'll notice on the outside are aluminum panels and the aluminum panels are attached to the wood frame or the wall studs. Now in between the wall studs, you're going to see fiberglass bat insulation. And then on the other side of the wall framing is the interior wall. And that makes up the walls of the RV. So here's what that RV looks like on the outside. And this is what you normally see with conventional constructed RVs. For those on the podcast, let me just describe it as it's a kind of nook and cranny outside. It's got creases and crevices in the sidewalls. When you see that, well, you know that is a conventionally built RV. But now Grand Design doesn't just build with the conventional building method for RVs. They also use laminate building materials. And really, that's the construction method used for all the rest of their product line. So here is their picture of a cutaway of a, an RV, a towable, that is made with the laminated construction method instead. And so here what you see is the fiberglass outer skin. It's attached to a thin but rigid board uh, inside that. That goes up against the aluminum frame. In between the aluminum studs is rigid foam insulation. And then put on the inside of the frame is the wall board. And very often it has a thin board on the other side of it as well. So the way that laminated construction works is they take all of these elements, they run them through either a pinch roller or they vacuum bond them, and that whole wall is made as one big piece. And then it's put onto the chassis and uh, the walls are all connected together. Now that's the way that laminated construction works. And here is a picture of that kind of RV. And for the folks that are on the podcast, what we're looking at is a smooth walled RV. That's the ones that you're more 
used to. When you look around and see towable RVs these days, you're used to seeing those smooth walls. And that's a giveaway that it's usually a laminated construction. And most often it is going to be aluminum construction for the frame, although not always. Now, let me make one important point here that needs to be made for those of you that just do not want any wood in your RV construction. And that is this, even if the sidewalls have an aluminum frame construction, it's very common that the uh, roof and the floors and maybe even the interior walls will have wood in them. So if you really don't want wood in your construction, you need to ask the manufacturer, are they using wood in the roof, floors, and interior walls? That may be kind of eye-opening for you. All right, now let's ask these two questions. Why are two different construction methods used at the same time? Which one can be said to be best? Well, let's put it to a head-to-head -head comparison between the two in various areas. And let's start with cost. And when it comes to cost, well, the conventional method wins, hands down. That's because the conventional method doesn't require any specialized tools. It's technology that's been used for years, so it's very common for people to understand how to do that. It's more or less kind of the same sort of construction that you do in residential housing. And aluminum itself costs more, and the tools to work with aluminum costs more, and the specialized methods of training for working on aluminum costs more as well. So when it comes to cost, the conventional construction method works very well and wins the day. All right, number two is appearance. And this is kind of subjective. You know, it's hard to say because people like different things, but I would have to say that most often, more people will probably like the smooth skin of the laminated method than they do the kind of wavy skin of the conventional method instead. So we'll give the edge to laminated there. Our next discussion will be about uh, insulation. And on this particular point, I'm going to give the nod to the conventional method instead. And uh, some may disagree with that, but here's the point. Bat, fiberglass bat insulation actually has a higher R factor than rigid foam insulation, or at least the kind of rigid foam that's most often used in many RVs. So even though some people really hate the idea of fiberglass insulation being in an RV, the reality is that very often it is a better insulating material. Let's move on to our next comparison, and that's on weight. And in this area, laminated construction wins hands down because of the aluminum frame. That's the whole point of having an aluminum build uh, in the RV. So definitely the weight in the weight situation, laminated is better. Let's move on to towing. And in this situation, I've got to give the nod to the laminated method again, but probably not for the reason you think, not because it's lighter. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later on, but I'm going to give the nod to lamination because of all the trouble that you have with wind resistance on an aluminum skinned RV. If you look at that wavy side, of the aluminum skinned RVs, all those cracks and crevices, all of that is more surface area to grab the wind. So it produces drag as you're towing them down the highway. So definitely when it comes to that subject of towing, we're going to give the advantage to the laminated method. Next up is repairs. And in this situation, I'm gonna firmly give the nod to the conventional method. Why? 
Well, if you have a problem with the sidewall of your RV and it's a laminated sidewall and it requires a real repair, someone maybe drove into it or it got hit and a hole was put in it by a branch or something along that line, well, you're probably going to need to replace the entire wall in many cases. Because remember what we said that the whole wall is either vacuum bonded or pinch rolled together. There's, it's very hard to make a, a localized repair on a fiberglass wall and make it look right. However, on a conventionally constructed RV, well, it's actually kind of simple. You just take off the aluminum panels where the damage is, you fix the damage inside, and then you put those panels back up again. It's a lot cheaper, quicker, and easier. So the nod goes toward the conventional method for repairs. Next up is cleaning. And in this area, laminated winds because of the smooth skin. Instead of all those crooks and crevices that you've got to get into in the aluminum skin of a conventional uh, method RV. Next up is exterior fade. In other words, RVs are usually out in the sun almost all the time. How does the exterior compare from the aluminum panels to the fiberglass that has either gel coat or paint on it? Interestingly, the aluminum panels handle the sun very well in most cases. So a slight advantage goes toward the conventional method there. All right, the next discussion is on weather. And in weather, actually with most kinds of weather, it's about the same, except for hail. When it comes to hail, you will really like having that laminated skin, that fiberglass skin on the outside. Uh, that's because the hail pretty much just kind of bounces right off and doesn't leave much damage in most cases. I've been through some hail storms with my uh, RV with a fiberglass outside or exterior. I thought for sure damage was being done, but went out outside afterward and uh, sure enough, it looked just fine. But with a conventional constructed trailer, well, when you have hail hitting those aluminum panels, you're usually going to see some serious denting. So in this case, we're going to give the advantage to laminating. All right, the next discussion will be on temperature conduction. In other words, which method transfers the outside temperature to the inside more easily? Well, in this particular situation, wood is a much better insulator than aluminum is. Aluminum conducts temperature very easily. So the reality is that in this particular area, you're going to find the conventional construction method actually works better. Moving on to our next point of discussion, and that's features. Remember how I mentioned that the laminated method makes the RV lighter because of the aluminum frame that's inside. When you use aluminum, well, it definitely lightens up the RV. Well, what do RV manufacturers do with that? Very often, they just take that weight savings and they put extra features in that RV. And so really what that means is that when you look at most laminated RVs out there, these towable RVs, you're usually going to see a lot more features and amenities in the laminated RVs than you do in the conventional method RVs. So the nod goes to laminated there. Now we're going to come to the one part of the discussion that is what most people argue about, and that is corrosion inside the RV. There is a real feeling out there among some that if you're using a conventional build method, well, it, the insides are just going to corrode away if you get any water intrusion. So it all hinges on water intrusion. But now in this particular area, I'm going to declare this a tie. And there's going to be some people that's really not going to agree with me on that, and I know it. But here is my thinking on the subject. 
When you have a laminated wall frame and water gets in, even if it's aluminum construction, very often water has been known to delaminate those walls. You see it all the time in laminated uh, constructed RVs where the outside fiberglass has pulled away and there's these big pockets or puffy areas on the side that look awful. They cannot be repaired easily. So when you're talking about repairing it, you're again, you're talking about replacing the entire wall by doing that. Well, that's pretty serious. Now, if we look at the conventional build method, there's nothing to delaminate. There's no lamination. So what you have is if water gets in, then you can repair the area that is damaged much easier, as I said before. However, if water gets into a wood-framed RV, it can a lot more easily break down the structure integrity. So when you compare both problems, they're both serious. So in this particular area, I'm going to declare it a tie. Now, the question is going to come up, though, well, what about ASDEL, using ASDEL in sidewalls uh, for the laminated method? Well, that's a very good question, and it's too much for this video. So I'm going to make another video that will discuss uh, using ASDEL in the construction method. So stay tuned for that as well. But let me make this point. This is really important, my friends. Either construction method will work just fine for years if you as an RV owner will maintain the joints and the seals on the roof and on the sidewalls like you should. If you do the maintenance that you should, then you're going to have this RV last for years and it doesn't matter whether it's a conventional construction or a laminated construction instead. Now, what I recommend is for you to go back over the pros and cons that I covered today. If you're in a quandary, you're not sure, should you buy one that is a conventional method or would it be better to get a laminated uh, type of RV? Well, go back over these points that I've covered and maybe write them down and make a comparison of which of the pros is best for you and your particular situation and how you use your RV. And by doing that, you can make a good decision. Just again, keep in mind that there's really nothing wrong with either of these construction methods. Whatever you choose though, be sure that you maintain that RV the way you should, and it will last you for many, many years and many wonderful adventures. Well, that's it for now. Have safe and happy travels, my friends. Until next time.